12, 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. It is time to spread the undiluted gospel to the dying world. An expository moment wrapped up with the power of the Holy Ghost. This is Pure Gospel Moment with Mac Miracle. Guest set for an encounter with a God who changes identity. Proverbs 9.11 It says, For by me thy days shall be multiplied. Someone can say amen to that. And the years of thy life shall be increased. For by me the days of your life shall be multiplied. And the years of thy life shall be increased. Your years will be increased. Your years will be increased. Your years will be increased. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Job chapter 5 verse 26. I have a habit of coming to church with Bible. Job chapter 5 verse 26 says, Thou shalt come to thy grave in full age. Thou shalt do what? Come to thy grave in full age. Which means if you are not full of age, you are not permitted to go to the grave. Somebody say, God forbid. I can't go to the grave when I'm not full of age. Like as a shock of corn comet in, comet in, in season. You can't pluck corn when the corn is not in season. That is the same thing this scripture is telling us. You will come of age before you go to grave. You can't, you can't die untimely. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 29 says The glory of young men is their strength and the beauty of old men is the gray head. The glory of what? Is their strength and the beauty of old men is what? Their gray head. God will beautify you with gray hair. He will allow you to get to the age where you will have gray heads. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Keys to long life. How do I enjoy long life? How can I enjoy long life? How can I enjoy long life? Number one, we are talk- we'll be talking about the power of our words. The power of our words. Number two, we will look at obedience and service to God as keys to long life. And number three, we will look at the power of the communion table. These are three sources of longevity. The power of the communion table, obedience to service, obedience and service to God rather, and the power of our words. Let's look at the power of our words. How to enjoy long life. First Peter chapter 3 verse 10 says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongues from evil. He that will long life, you need life, you will love good days. Do what? Refrain your tongue from evil. And his lips that it speak no God. You want good days. Every prayer you have been praying, no answer. You wish that you have good things, but bad things keep happening. Refrain your tongue from evil. Refrain your tongue from evil. You can't expect good and be speaking bad. Bad will surely happen. You can't do what? Expect good and you are speaking bad. What will happen? Bad will happen. You can't ask me, how are you? And even though things are about to get better, and I tell you that things are not fine, you are joking. I can't tell you that. Even when you answer me that, I will correct you. If you don't pick the correction, I won't listen to you. I'll keep on correcting you to pick the correction. Nothing like how are you? You say I'm not fine. What is I'm not fine? I have told you over and over who is I am. I am that I am is God. You don't start any negative statement with I am. You don't say I am poor. I am sick. I am not saying God is sick. His name is I am. Say I am fine. I am wealthy. I am rich. I am helping people. I am living long. I am not dying early. Can someone practicalize that and say I am rich. I am I am not poor. I am healthy. I am wealthy. That is what you should be doing. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 20 
to 21. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. Not just your handwork. You don't only need the handwork for your stomach to be filled. From the fruit of thy mouth, a person's what? Stomach is filled. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is always filled. And the harvest of their lips, they shall be satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 to 21. For the benefit of those who are not with their Bible. Never allow circumstance, let me beg you, make you confess negative words. Never do what? Allow circumstance. Circumstances is doing their job. For a predicament to occur, that is the job it's doing. You do your own job to speak positive words. You do your own job to confess positive words. Not that the situation is bad. You to continue to continue com complain. Ah, things are bad. Though. Things are bad. Though. We already know that things are bad. Why not use your mouth to change things around? What you say is who you become. This is your altar. This tongue is your altar. So whatever you open your mouth to say, that is what you become. Never allow people to make you say things negative. Symptoms are not permanent. Use your mouth to speak manifestations. Use your mouth to do what? To speak manifestations. First Peter chapter 3 verse 10 says, For whoever would love life and see good days, First Peter 3 verse 10, For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceit. Keep your tongue from deceitful speech. Long life is in your mouth. As many as you deceive, you are minusing days from your life. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Colossians 4 verse 6. Whatever you say goes directly to your spirit. Whatever you say, whether good, whether bad, it does what? It goes directly to your spirit man. That's why Jesus said, it's not what man eats that defies him, but what comes out of his mouth. Because it's what you are saying that can destroy you. Proverbs 15 verse 4 says, The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Say this prayer with me. My tongue, I command you, you will not put me in trouble and you will not cause untimely death for me. My tongue, you will not put me in trouble. And you will not cause me to die untimely. You belong to God. You don't belong to the devil. Don't allow the devil to put words in your mouth. Don't allow Satan to tell you what to do, what to say, what to act. You belong to God. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. Have you entered your room one day? They collected what belonged to you. Maybe your sister, your brother, your friend collect something that belongs to you without telling you. Do you know how angry you are? Who took this? Why will you take it without my permission? That is how God is angry. When you, who belongs to him, begin to please the devil with your mouth, you begin to do things that make him angry. That
that is how hungry he is. Look at who I made in my image. Look at the mouth I created for my own glory. Now you use it for something else. That is how angry he, be, he becomes. The same way you enter your house and say, who took this that belonged to me? That is how God becomes angry when you no longer please him. When you use your mouth opposite of what he created it for. He created your mouth for worship. He created your mouth for the gospel. He created your mouth for prayers. He created your mouth to be a healing bar, not using your mouth to cause problems. He that will love length of days will not allow his mouth to speak evils or evil. Proverbs 21 verse 23 says, those who guard their mouth, those who guard their mouth and their tongue, keep themselves from calamity. If you guide your mouth and guide your tongue, my dear, you are keeping yourself from what? Calamity. We are talking about long life. Many are below six feet today because of their mouth. May your mouth not cause you to die untimely. May your mouth not cause you to die untimely. Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from troubles. Guide your mouth. Proverbs 21 23 says, Disunity, have you noticed disunity among brethren is caused by misuse of tongue? You will come and say, This one said this, that one said that, this one did not say this. Before you know, problem blow out. There is a prayer the prayer minister led that God should guide the pastor with the spirit that he will not judge by what he hear or judge by what people say. That scripture is very correct. Because not what not all what people say is correct. Are you hearing me now? You can't come to me and tell me something and I don't know. The, by the spirit of God in me, I know the one that is lying. And I know the one that is true. Even though I don't answer you a word, I know the one that is lying. I know the one that is true. I will pick a few and leave the rest. Because if I follow what everybody is saying, if I follow what you, you told me, I won't greet this one again. If I follow what this one told me, I won't see this one as a member of this church again. If I follow what this one told me, so when everybody talks everything they are talking, I hand over everything to God. That's what the scripture says. Keep the, those who keep their mouth, keep it from calamity. When is there anywhere that there is calamity, it's too much of church or church. This one said this. You know, this one said this. This one said that. This one did not say this. And this one did not say that. I'm going to pray one prayer as we continue. That God, anywhere I've misused my mouth, have mercy. Create in me a new tongue. There's a song that says, create in me a new spirit. Now, God, create in me a new tongue. Open your mouth and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Create in me a new tongue. Create in me a new tongue in the name of Jesus. Create in Lesike pranta la kasha kata baligada. Great in me, and you heart and purify, and purify. Great in me, and you heart that I may walk. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Psalm chapter 34, verse 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Put it on screen. Psalm chapter 34, verse 13. Can we read together? I want to go. The media people want to go. My NIV version, which is not in the laptop, says, Keep your tongue from evil and keep your lips from telling lies. Most of us, the only, the only truth that comes out from our mouth is good morning. The only what? Truth that comes out from your mouth is good morning. By the time you open your mouth, before you realize it yourself, you are already lying. You don't have control over words in your mouth. You are not doing anybody. You are shortening your days one after the other. 
The day you will wake up to what you are doing to yourself, it is too late. Take it from me, I'm telling you. That is the Bible. Keep thy mouth from evil and your tongue from speaking lies. Despite how many people who succeed to believe your lies, one day you will open up to your own downfall. You may be you may be so happy. Oh, this one believed in my lies. This one believed in my lies. This one also believed in my lies. I was able to, 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 to deceive people. One day, when you will wake up to know what you have done to yourself, there will be no medicine that will be able to cure you. You know, one day for thief, when thief is stealing, if you tell a thief that they will catch you one day, he will say, it's a lie, they can never catch you. When a thief does the first one, he says, I succeeded. They didn't catch me. Tell the thief they will catch you when you go again. The thief will say, it's a lie. I know I did it the first time. But the day they catch a thief, maybe in Ariadne, what happens to the person? Inside tire, they burn the tire. That's how lie is. You lie without control. Is your life. That's why I'm treating mouth, 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 mouth first. This is the gate to life and gate to death. Please, don't forget this message if you want to forget anything. So that when it happens, your spirit will bear witness that a pastor told you that a day that your mouth is your gate to your life. Some people have control over themselves. And some, their own is something else. You can't say, Jesus, I love you. I accept you into my life. And you still continue to live a life of lies. That when you tell someone something, the person needs to go and ask more than 10 persons before they believe you. Then you are close to death. You are close to the grave. You see, the power of death, life and death is where? In the tongue. Take a look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 19. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 19. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 19. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but the lying tongue is but for a moment. You are enjoying that lies they believed just for a moment. Just for a moment. As sweet as a lie is, it's just an express way to death and hell. Be truthful to yourself by begging God to help you from lying tongue. Tell God, God, even me, I they fear myself for the kind liar they lie. Help me. Then be open to God like that. When you are only you and God, God, I know you are the one that created me, but they lie and they lie. They shock me. Help me. Say you are the only one that can help me. They lie. I am lying. They shocking me. Some people we talk, when we talk, we don't listen to ourselves. Some people, when we lie, we are convinced that that lie is the only truth. That is how destroyed you have been. Your spirit has been destroyed. It costs nothing to say truth. It costs what? Nothing to say the truth. A lie needs another lie to cover it up. A lie does what? Needs another lie. Truth needs no nothing. The truth is the truth. If I tell this man now, I come here, I take something now. This thing belongs to him. I take him. And you saw me. I say, I say please tell the owner. It's not me that took it. I've lied. Sure, right? The owner meets this guy. The guy, for him to tell me it's not me. Is that another lie? Another lie. And you come to ask me, I tell you it's not me. You need to lie and lie and lie and be covering up. And maybe one day, the owner speaks a word. And in the future, you need something. That word double crosses you to destroy your destiny. What caused that? The lie you lied. Life is sweet, though. You see, this life is sweet. So don't do anything that will cut short your life. Do you know when the devil does? He will be making you misuse your life. Live anyhow. When he sees that it's time for you to settle down with enjoyment, he says, Boy, okay, come. It's time for you to reap everything you are doing. Then you can't settle down to enjoy your life. Then you can't settle down to enjoy things you labored for. To become a payback time. Somebody say, God forbid. Use your mouth to heal people rather than wounding them. Use your mouth to do what? To heal people rather than causing destruction for people. Let people listen to you and say, Kai, thank God I listened to you. 
thank God that you advised me. Not when you say something, say, God forbid what made me to come and listen to this person. Your mouth can be a bullet. Your words can be a bullet. Proverbs 12 verse 18 says, the word of the reckless pierces like a sword. Last, but Proverbs chapter 12 verse 18, the words of the reckless pierces like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Use your words to heal people. Verse 19, truthful lips endures forever, but a lying tongue lasts for a moment. Subheading 2, obedience and service to God. We just finished talking about the first subheading. The power of the words of your mouth. Don't use your mouth to say evil things. Don't use your mouth to call death upon yourself. Don't use your mouth to say things are going, God, things are not going well. No, use your mouth to say they are going well, even when they are not going well. And when circumstances tempt you to lie, don't lie. Overcome that circumstance. Don't lie. Say the truth. Don't lie. The second one is obedience and service to God. If you can be a study of the Bible, you will become a graduate of longevity. I have said this over and over that the Bible, the scripture is a stream of life. You want long life? Always study this Bible. Always do what? Study this Bible. It helps you. It grants long life. Our ways may seem right, but long life can only be found in God's ways. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 to 2. My son, forget not my law. Let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. The laws of God add peace and long life to you. First King chapter 3 verse 14 says, And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my status and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. If only you will keep the ways of God. Your ways are so right to you. That is why you have not gotten anything from God. The way you want to live your life is very right with you. The things you want to do is very right with you. That is why you have not gotten the things you want God to do for you. Stop living your own way. Live the way God wants. Stop pleasing yourself. Start pleasing God. Stop pleasing men. Start pleasing God. There is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is destruction. I love my life this way. I love doing things that please me. Let them say what they want to say. This is how I want to live my life. That is the road to death. Gone are those days. When you pass on the road, you see obituary posters. I used to say this. You see, 80 years old, 90 years old. Now, you can you hardly see 80. It's just a few that you see 80, 90. These days, you see 25 years old. Call to glory. Call to which glory? How can you call a 25 years old to glory? It's a shameful death. You are not supposed to die, die by that time. Although some of them innocently they died out of the devil's torment, sickness, and all the rest, but many of them they brought the death upon themselves. 30 years, 35, 40, God to glory. Somebody say, God forbid. You won't die at that age. But don't use your hand to pull yourself to such tragedy. Many people are looking up to you. Many people are looking up to you. If you are many people, if you think many other people are not looking up to you, you yourself is looking up to you. Don't disappoint you. Don't do what? Disappoint you. Don't disappoint you. What does it what do you really gain? Pleasing self, pleasing man, and at the later on you have nothing to write home about. What do you really gain? Choose to serve God. Choose to serve God. Choose to follow his way. Say, if you will keep my laws, if you do what? Keep my laws. Deuteronomy 6 verse 2 says, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee that thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life and that thy days may be prolonged. 
when you obey God, you prolong your days. When you have fear and reverence for God, you prolong your days. You cannot do evil and think that you will live long. My wife and myself, we were coming to church this early morning, this morning. We saw a packet of cigarettes on the floor. At the back of the cigarettes, they drew two lungs, human lungs. They drew it on the cigarettes. One lung, one of the lungs was born to ashes. One of the other one was fresh, like fresh. And they wrote under it that this is what this cigarette will do to you when you smoke it, like this other lungs that is burnt. And I told my wife, laughing, I said, Do you know that secret is the only poison that they, they write that it will kill you and you still use your money and buy it? It's a poison that they will kill human being body. Human, they, do, they used to write the smokers are liable to die young. They used to write it. Maybe they, they didn't used to read it. Lungs. They did what? They do lungs on it now. To show you in case you cannot read, this is how your lungs will become. Yet people, the one we saw on the ground, I know secret inside. The person has smoked that one, finished and throw, but that their eyes is blind to that. It's showing you that this is how your lungs will become. Yet you're buying it, you are eating it, you are eating what will kill you. And when the problem comes, they begin to look for prophets to pray. When prophets pray, you don't survive. They say, Prophet, no get power. Now you no know, get sense. You are the one that killed yourself. You are the one that killed yourself. You tell the child, don't put hand in this fire. This fire will burn you. The child say, no, no, no. You leave the child. Let the child put the hand and know that it's actually fire. My statutes and my commandments. You can't obey God. Live according to his statutes. Live according to his commandments and not live long. You can't obey his commandments and not do what? Live long. One thing serving God does, not just obeying him, not just living after his status, now you still need to serve him. One thing serving God does for you is that it makes you younger than your age and stronger than your age mates. Serving God makes you younger than your age and stronger than your age mates. People like Ateboye, so Yedepos, Kumuyis, bring their age mates and line up with them. They are stronger. Kumuyi is stronger than his age mates. Or Yedepo is stronger than his age mates. Why? Because they serve God. You can't serve God and God leaves you grow weak. You can't. I am younger than my peers in face. I am younger than what? My peers in my face. Because I do what? I serve God. You can't use this body for God and God allows this body to grow wrinkle. The beauty cream you need is serving God. The Mary Kay you are looking for for your face not to grow wrinkle is to use your face for prayers. Prayer wear out every wrinkle from your face. Serve God. Don't be satisfied. Okay, I, I belong to church. I go to church. God is helping me. Don't be satisfied with that. Serve Him. Do you see what I just did this morning? Some young children played keyboard. Just keyboard though, they are not even mastered it very well. And I felt led to bless them. That is how God does. That is how God is. When he sees you, go all out for him. He fights for you. It may look as if God isn't there for you when you are serving him. But he's watching. He's fighting on sin battles. And someday you will see it that God has been there for you. Job 11 verse 17 says, And thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt be as the morning when you serve God. Exodus chapter 23 verse 12 says, But you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and will remove sickness from your midst. You will do what? Serve the Lord your God. I used to say this. Serving God makes him service you. Do you take a car to mechanic that does not serve you? Oh, I just want to take this car to mechanic. The car has been there. The car does not carry me. Whenever I want to go out, the car does not serve me, but I just want to service you. No. It's a car that serves you. Oh, this car has been helpful to me. Let me just go and service the car. This car has been so helpful to me. Let me just go and service this car. God can't service you when you don't serve him. Get 
your Christianity, you've been born again since 1902. Thank God. They baptized you in 1888. Thank God. You were the first set of people that started evangelism. Thank God. You are the first set of people that enter church. Thank God. But get tired of sitting. Also get into the mood of serving. Not because of man. Not because of what I will give to you. Not because of what man will do for you. Because you understand the scripture. You understand what God can do for you. Long life or longevity is tied to service to his kingdom. The God who laid a platform called the altar can't let any altar speak against you when you are constantly on his altar. Am I speaking to somebody now? He won't. He wants no heart, no hands, no leg, no mouth come against you. Number three, finally. What grants longevity? The communion table. The communion table. The communion table is a mystery yet to be fully unveiled. As we keep on reading and studying the scripture, you keep on understanding the power of the communion. There have been cases where people, their bodies have been packed up by administering the communion, they jump back to life. There are cases where people possessed, they take the communion, the devil leaves them. There are people where the devil has tormented the madness of a higher instance. But taking the communion, their body comes back. This communion this morning will remove every form of sickness from your body. This communion this morning will remove every finger of the enemy pointing at you. This communion this morning will be an, an agent and, and a tool of longevity in your system in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has planted in your body as we partake of this communion, it will be flushed out. It will be flushed out. I don't care to know what drugs you have been taking the ones you have been planning to take as you partake of this communion the blood of Jesus and the flesh of Jesus it will act as a super agent of healing in your body in the name of Jesus as I spoke in so shall it be in Jesus name communion began on the annual celebration of Passover when Jesus told his disciple to remember his sacrifice as they ate the bread and drank the wine when you remember Christ's sacrifice, it helps you become aware that Satan can crush you. The Holy Communion uses the bread as the symbol of the blood of body of Jesus and the wine as the symbol of his blood. The act of taking communion does not save us. It is an act of worship. And remembrance communion does not save you from sin you have to confess to Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior that's what saves you from sin let me take this communion, it saved me from sin let me take this communion, it will save me from this habit that is not the work of communion you confess Jesus, your bad habit is saved what communion does is that it activates the power of God in you it activates the power of the blood of Jesus in you, it activates it shields your blood, your body and your blood from evil and it immunizes you against evil. As you partake of this communion, it will be an immunization agent. You won't die untimely. John 6, 53 to 58. John chapter 6, verse 53 says, Jesus said to them, Verily, truly, I say unto you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Except you eat the flesh, except you eat the flesh of the Son of God and drink his blood, you do what? Have no life in you. I speak over this flesh and this blood. As you partake of it, the life of Jesus will come activated in you. It becomes activated in you to only you that said amen, it becomes activated in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 54 says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life 
and I will raise him up on the last day. 55. For my flesh is really food and my blood is really drink. Jesus said, when you eat my flesh, he's not telling you that it's the flesh as in him, you are eating him. He said, his flesh has become this food and his, his blood has become drink. So he's telling you in the sense that whenever you are taking this, don't think you are taking one wine like that. Don't think you are taking one juice that is sugary like that. See it as the blood of Jesus. See it as the flesh of Jesus. As I am doing this, I am doing it to remember and to tell the devil, to put the devil in check, to know that, hey, see, see, this body belongs to the, God, to the, the living God. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This flesh is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The blood that flows in me is the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Seko said, you are packed up. AAS, you are packed up. In the name of Jesus, I command every form of blood disease. As I partake of this blood, they are flushed out. That is what this communion helps you with. 55. 56 rather. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. As you take this communion, Jesus will remain in you and you in him. He remains in you and you in him. 58. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. By partaking of this communion, you will live forever. You will not die untimely. By the time you put your hands on this communion and partake of it, wherever the devil or the agent of demons have put their hands to work against your life, this communion silence them in the name of Jesus. This communion silence the work of the enemy in the name of Jesus. This communion silence malaria, silence painful menstruations silence every work of the devil in your life silence anything that the devil has planted silence lumps in the body silence every disease of, of the blood I decree in the name of Jesus this communion table silence every work of the devil in the name of Jesus as you partake of this communion you will not be found wanting in the land of the living you will enter January 2023 over and over and over and over as you partake of this communion whatever that's been eating your source of income it will be silenced today anything that makes you touch money today you can't touch again tomorrow I decree this communion silence them I love the testimony our daughter princess Shadia you can't be serving God and not be having massive testimony it's my heart desire that every young person here are not just young members but young entrepreneurs are you hearing me now? I keep on saying that you will see people will climb here and say, Oh, this is my testimony. I am I have the hope. That's you have an up. That's what you are trying to say. I have an office of your own. You are not serving anybody now. That is the kind of testimony that will keep on happening here. It will keep on happening here. You too will come next week and say, I have an office. Not I am planning to. You say I have an office of my own. That will be your testimony. But you see, the one testifying such testimonies are serving God. That is a secret for you to know. So I have to serve God. None of them claims they are serves me. I can't pay you. I won't pay you. But God does. Am I speaking to you now? Man can appreciate. Man can award. But it's God that rewards. Man can do what? Award. But God does what? Reward. Before we stand up to pray for this communion I want to let you know this that there are things that no man can help you overcome there are things that no man can help you overcome is there anybody that came to help me dress this morning did you come to help me dress this morning I dressed myself and I came here today the way men will address you is the way you want to build your life nobody can build you Pastor, don't preach finish for Sunday. I don't go to my house. Go watch my own life. Your life is in your own hands. Your life is in your hands. What men will say of your life? What men will say of your life, of your destiny, of your name is tied to how you live your life? No one will say, oh, help me. 
Pastor, pray for me this. You know this thing. Pastor, pray for me. You know, I've been trying to do this. I've been trying to stop this. I've been trying to do this one. I've been trying not to do this one. It's a lie. Pastor, we pray his prayer, but it won't be answered if you tell yourself that you won't stop it. Am I speaking to somebody now? The power of life and death is not in my own tongue. Your own power of your life and death is in what? Your own tongue. If I speak here as a prophet and say, let there be life, you won't die untimely. And you say amen. It will happen when you act according to the amen you have said. Not according to the life you will live after you live here. Every Sunday, we keep on resounding this. Every Wednesday, we keep on resounding this. Life messages, expository messages, messages that are tied to your destiny. Because your pastor has seen ahead. When old men are in this house, there are some kind of messages I will preach. If this house, maybe 80% of people in this house are old men, I won't preach this kind of message. I will preach the kind of message that will help them to die well. I hear me now. Because they are near grief. The message that I will preach to them is don't worry, the problems of life won't kill you. Don't worry, the problems of life won't kill you. I will preach a place that I know that these people are looking for pension. They are not seeing their pension. That's the kind of message that I preach to them. But you are not on that. None of you here is at that age. You are praying to get to that age. That is why every day, case you say, Pastor, this is your message. You are repeating these kind of things you are saying every time because you are in that age that needs this kind of message. You have not gotten to your tomorrow yet. So you need the message that will shield you and direct you to your tomorrow. So it's not as if I don't have anything to tell you other than what I am telling you. Your tomorrow is like a candle light, not the flood light yet. And the only way you can carry a candle light from here to that flower point is by shielding it with your hands. Someone who is holding a torchlight can move with speed. Someone who is holding a candlelight doesn't move with speed. You move gradually. You cover the light so that air will not quench it. Breeze will not quench it as you are marching. Those breeze are likened to the friends, likened to the society, likened to the things that are pushing you to do evil likened to the friends that will come around you to deceive you, likened to the temptation the devil will come and tell you, do this one steal this one, do this one commit this one, that is the priest blowing to quench your candlelight, but tell them that devil, tell those friends tell those people, I understand what you are doing but I know that my lights have not done to touch light yet, it's a candlelight, let me guide it, let me be guiding it call me a fool, I agree, let me be guiding my lights, call me a stupid man, I agree I'm not agreeing to join you people then, I'm not a what's up guy, no problem let me guide my light, oh this one does not know what is happening in town, yes I don't want to know what is happening in town, I'm guiding my light, oh this one thinks what came here to deceive we are trying to help you. Thank you. I don't need your help. I'm guiding my life. Look at the way you are dressing. Don't you see the way we are dressing? Join us to steal so that you will live up to standard. Oh, I understand what you are saying, but I don't want you. Keep on guiding your life. You will be very surprised the day you get to where you touch your touch light. Those people are advising you, we won't even see them with a candlestick. They are far gone. They are far down below the six, six feet. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, my future cannot be traded with a muzzle of meal. Say, I can't trade my future with a muzzle of meal. Say, I won't disappoint my generation. Say, I won't disappoint my generation. Say, I will live long life. And I will do things that will make me live long life. Number one, what did I say? Your tongue. It will happen to Nana's church closed. As I'm living here now, somebody will ask you, how are you? Then you will know that you will know that whether you have been listening to this message. I have taught messages like this immediately, and people are following me to office. I want to advise, I want to talk. I will, I will not say, ah, how is it? Now how is life? Now nah, it's not fine. No. I just finished preaching that message to tell you that the people have not been listening. And as you are entering with me, I say, How is everything? I say, it's not fine. Which means you have not been listening from the beginning. I've been wasting my life, wasting my mouth, wasting my battery, wasting food. Eh? Somebody say, God forbid. <laughs> Don't waste our battery and our fuel. <laughs> you must hear it. It's more enter your spirit. We we'll keep on saying it. Pastor Chris said, keep on talking it. Don't stop saying it. We we'll keep on saying it until your spirit man agrees with it. Somebody say, all is fine. Say, all is well. Say, I am fine and blessed. How are you? 
How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? I will try you tomorrow when I see you on the road. Hey, how are you? Say, now, Pastor, get that CPU. I'll leave you there and walk away. As you are saying, I'm fine, I'm blessed. Your spirit is hearing it. And your spirit doesn't have any complaint. You have to adjust. When a child comes out from the womb, does the child know his name? But you keep on calling the child Junior. 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 One day you'll be in the kitchen. Junior. Junior will walk out kitchen. What happened? That name has been used to him, whether he likes it or not. That's how our mouth is. When circumstances come, I never eat since morning. I never eat since then. I am fine and blessed. I define this thing. I am fine and blessed. I need to go to school. No school fees yet. I am fine and blessed. If you don't have anything to thank God for, let me tell you this bombshell before we pray. Hey, my mates stay for school. I know they go to school. My father's mate, they debut upstairs with a stay for mud house. You have not seen anything to thank God for. When you go home today, thank God that mosquito does not transmit HIV. Thank God that what? Mosquito does not. Everybody are now from day positive for HIV now. Mosquito go bite, bite, bite. He go bite who carry HIV. Still come bite you, yet it will transmit. God know why he do it like that. Are you hearing me now? No, be only ma- malaria medicine for the take now. For day on the HIV drugs. But mosquito need to transmit HIV. Even if they bite you, say one day I will enter your house where mosquito can't enter. At least the one with the bite you can't transmit HIV. What am I saying in essence? Despite how life looks now. Despite how poor you think you are, there are people you are better than today. There are people you are what? There are people you are what? So you can't kill yourself. You are drinking, Gary? Drink it with happiness. You chew biscuits to sleep? Chew it with happiness. I say, one day I know I will give many people. Chew it with what? Happiness. I'm just wrapping up, telling you what will also make you not to worry yourself to have untimely death. I said hyperthinking causes hypertension. Change your hyperthinking to hyperpraise so you don't have hypertension. Stand to your feet and begin to appreciate God for this word. Father, we thank you. Father, I thank you for this word. Father, we thank you for this word we have heard. Kindle brass, she get a leg of brass at her. Jehovah, he did a pupe. Jehovah, he did a Jehovah, he did a pupe. Jehovah, he the right hands to heaven and say father any agent of demons human agents of the devil want to waste my life I disassociate myself from them in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself now in the name of Jesus. Please, if you can pray, carry the mic and pray. Back up the prayer. Anyone, agent of the devil, that want to cut short my life. Every agent of the devil, 
I want to cut short my life. Jesus. I disassociate by the blood of Jesus. I disassociate by the blood of Jesus. I disassociate myself in the name of Jesus. Pala can go shut at his elegance. That's not in the common. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Many of you, you want to really serve God. You love him so much. But the devil will keep on bringing things that will make you not to be able to serve him. Father, today, I pawn every trash every accusing finger everything that the devil has laid on me to steal my heart of service from you I crush it now in the name of Jesus and I decree from today henceforth use me for your glory pray that prayer in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus use me for your glory from today henceforth someone is not praying that prayer ask that you use me for your glory Today in the name of Jesus, Lord, that which you want to do to me, I am here. I am available in the name of Jesus. I am available, Jesus. Use me for your glory. Use me, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Use me for your glory. That's what she want to do with humanity. Father, use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus, eh? use Jesus mighty name of prayer. Amen. Stretch your hands towards this communion and pray. Father, as I partake of this communion, anything that the devil has planned or put in my life to kill me, to cause me die untimely, as I partake of this communion, untimely death lives my life now and let the supernatural life of Christ be activated in me. Open your mouth. I'm praying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, as I eat of your flesh and drink of your blood, I decree that everything not planted me by you be rooted out in the name of Jesus. I decree as I eat of your flesh and drink of your blood, death is thrown away, sickness is wiped off. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything contrary to redemption. Jesus, mighty in our prayer. Amen. I commit this communion unto the mighty hands of God. As you partake of this communion, you will not die untimely. Amen. You will not die untimely. Amen. You will not die untimely. Amen. You will not see shame. Amen. Every blood disease is cursed. Amen. And everything the enemy has planted in you, that the devil will uproot, the, that the devil has planted in you, God will uproot them now. Amen. I decree that the blood of Jesus shields you. Amen. Shield your family. Amen. To only you that said amen, so shall it be. Amen. Communion, take it prayerfully now. We believe you were blessed with today's episode of Pure Gospel Moment. For prayers, testimonies, or formal inquiries, you can reach Mac Miracle on plus two three four eight one two three two eight eight five nine three. That is plus two three four eight one two three two eight eight five nine three. God bless you, real good.